In this video, I'll show you the process of burning a sequence that you've already created, your finished product, to your DVD or burning it back to tape within Final Cut Pro. So we've got our Final Cut Pro window open, we've got our project open, timeline editing, and we've got our pieces here, and as well as our timeline and our finished product, how we have it. Something fairly simple, cross dissolve in, and there's the drop frame problem yet again. This is what happens when you work on a laptop. Uh, once again, one more time. Let's see if third time's a charm. There you go, and the stuff cross fades out. Now, what we definitely want to make sure we do before we burn to the tape is you see the green line here. Remember, green means that it's okay, it'll play in the preview, but you still need to render it before you burn it to tape. So we go to Sequence, Render All, click Render All. This will take some a little bit of time here. And now it's blue, so we know it's ready to go. So, once we're prepared, we want to make sure we have our sequence highlighted here in our window that we're burning to tape. Sometimes you can have just one of these things highlighted and that's what will burn to tape. So make sure you've got your entire sequence one highlighted right here by clicking sequence one. Now if you're working on other sequences be careful with that. Sometimes you can have both highlighted and they'll overlay and it'll be just a big mess. So make sure you've got the proper sequence highlighted that you want to burn to tape. We'll go to file, print to video. We'll click that and this is about as far as I can take you because I don't have a, a DVD recorder hooked up nor my tape deck right now. But these are all the options you've got. You've got color bars, which is basically for broadcast, broadcasting or narrow casting. It's to set up to help a company know that their colors when you're turning in the tape, let's say you did a 30 minute TV show for them, it helps them to match up the colors to make sure that theirs is right. So when it's going out over the air or through the wire, that it's going out properly and looks okay. Also the same thing for um, black and also your tone levels. Negative 12 is the standard or negative 10 depending on, on who and, and what you're working for and on. So you set those levels and you can set a duration. Once again bars and tone overlap with each other. Each other. So 60 seconds is a little bit long for my taste. If you're gonna do it I tend the max I'll ever do is 30 seconds. Um, even that can get annoying. Make sure your speakers are down a little bit low if you're going to do that. You can do a built-in countdown video, or if you've got a file, if you've got your personal own countdown video, you can use that as well. You can do a fade in from black. You can do a slate, which is basically a title, a clip name. You can do a text. You can do a file. There's a lot of things you can do here. You can print it. You can loop it uh, between each loop piece closed captioning data, uh, and then black on the end of the trailer. So then that way you can have a couple seconds of time code. So then that way if you ever needed to edit it again, it'll be easy and you won't have time code breaks. Now, one of the most important things here is this automatically start recording. This is where you need to be careful. If you don't have your tape deck properly set up already or your DVD in the DVD recorder and it's prepared to record, then I wouldn't have this clicked at all. Even if I did, I still am precautious about it because of the things you need to do. So, if you have it set, what it'll do when you click OK, another dialog box will pop up, and I'll go ahead and click OK. And it should pop up and say, OK, preparing, ready for playback, click OK to start recording media onto deck. So then you'd click OK if you were ready with your tape deck and you were ready with your, or your DVD recorder. Then you could click OK there and it should start doing it automatically uh, depending on it. Now certain DVD recorders you still have to hit OK and uh, certain tape decks as well. So that's why whenever I print a tape I don't even bother with the start automatically recording. I leave it unchecked, I click OK ready for playback, start video recording, and then click OK to begin. 
So now what I could do is I can go ahead and click record on my DVD recorder or if I'm doing it to a tape deck I could hit my play and record button at the same time on the tape deck and once the tape gets rolling or the DVD gets recording then you click OK. So that's the instance what you want to do if you're going to be recording and burning to a DVD or a tape using Final Cut Pro.